In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 and 14, Paul wrote as a man of God, an anointed man of God, an apostle of God. And he said, be on your guard, he wrote to the Corinthian church. He said, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith. Now he's preaching, this is a man preaching to men. Stand firm in the faith. Paul knew how to stand firm in the faith. He said, be men of courage, be strong, and do everything in love. Amen. This is what we're talking about. I'm not talking about men that get so angry they decide to do something and push and fight back. I'm talking about men that will fight for their family in love that will fight for the children and other people's children in love, that will fight to see a nation changed and an awakening transpire across the land based on love, but with enough grit to stand firm and not back down, not shrink back, but only go forward for the cause of Christ. Amen. So I have three points. Points number one. Point number one, Corey mentioned in his message last week, just three simple words. He said, it's a war. He was preaching for the family, and he said, it's a war. You see, the enemy is coming after your family. Men, the enemy is coming after you. If he can destroy your testimony before your family, he can destroy your family. Don't let that happen. Fight and win. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. There is a war. If heaven is real, hell is real. If God is real, the devil is real. If the devil is real, God is real. There is a war. There always has been a war through the, through the centuries. Going back to the days of Adam and Eve, there was a spiritual war. And through the serpent, the devil tempted Eve to eat the apple. And then she invited her husband to. He wimped out on that day. He ate the forbidden fruit. Instead of standing, standing strong and leading his wife right, he ate of the apple. And the Bible tells us that sin came into the world because of Adam, not because of Eve. Can you imagine what may have transpired through the centuries if Adam had refused to eat the, ap the apple and to honor God? Well, we know history, we know what has transpired, but let me tell you, men, you have a choice. You can eat the apple or you cannot eat the apple. You can bite into sin or you can reject the sin. You can draw near to God or you can follow Satan himself and do the pleasures that he offers and you can find yourself destroyed and your family destroyed too. Amen? This may not be the Father's Day message you anticipated. That's why we had Zach give some free gifts. <laughs> and, and if you're really perturbed and, and even aggravated about it that you didn't get a gift, come see me. I'll buy you a gift. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> in fact, we have some free gifts that I'll be glad to give you. It's called the Bible. And it will be the best gift you could ever know. If you're, not in a if you're not in a battle, you won't win. It's kind of like this. If two football teams show up at a game and only one team walks onto the field, we know who will lose. Walk onto the field. Step into the game. Amen. Quit seeing how far you can draw away from God and still be found in His grace. We're living in a day today where the churches are preaching. One, one preacher referred to it as sloppy grace, and, and we're, but we're 
We're living in a day when we're seeing as never before pastors and churches and ministries preaching a grace without repentance. Jesus said, unless you repent, you will not be saved. Unless you repent, unless you stop and turn and go back the other way, you will never see the kingdom of God. Amen. There's no such... There's no such thing, it may be preached and termed that way, but grace is not sloppy. Grace is given only to those who repent. I'll say this again, as you have heard me before. God loves everybody. He'll love you into heaven, or He will love you into hell. But grace is only for those who repent. And God's, God's favor goes to those who are devout. Amen? Amen. Get a hold of the Word of God. Get a hold of the truths of God. God's favor goes to those who are devout. And part of devoutness is persistent. You don't quit. You don't give up. Amen. Amen. I'm not perfect to this day. I finally came to decide maybe I don't want to be perfect. What's wrong with me? I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be perfect. But I will not quit endeavoring to seek God and serve Him with all of my heart. Amen. And you may be going through something and you may have failed and you feel like a failure. And if the whole world knew, you would feel ashamed. But too many people already know anyway. But don't quit. Amen. Keep serving God and let your devotion keep being surrendered unto Him. And I pray prayers like this. You know, I got tired of lying to God and saying, God, I won't do that anymore. I just started saying, God, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I want to draw near to you. Draw me nearer to you. And in my surrender, I find a grace. And in my surrender, I find a place of devotion. And in my surrender, I see a place where God is working and answering my prayer, ministering to my family, into the ministry and abroad. In his favor, you find the strength to fight the battle. If you're not in a fight, find your cause. Amen. Let me read Deuteronomy chapter 30, and I need to rush through here. He said, see, I set before you today life and prosperity. I mean, that's part of God's plan. He said, I set before you today life and the prosperity, death, and destruction. Which one do you want? For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, and to keep His commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the love of your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. Praise God. Amen. That's a great promise. Deuteronomy 30. 17 and 18. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, we could say the gods of pleasure, the gods of lust, the gods of greed. He said, if you turn away, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. The next two verses, verses 19 and 20. This day, he says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you. He said, everyone hearing me on earth and and God in heaven, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm setting before you life and death, blessings and curses, Which one do you want? He said, now choose life so that you and your children may live. I love that. Amen. I remember when we had tests and they gave us uh, multiple choice. We called it multiple guess. But they gave us multiple choice. And here he gave them two choices. And then he gives them the answer. I love that. Amen. Now, I'm setting before you life and death. Now choose life so that you and your children. Guys, are you hearing me today? If you choose death, your children may have death. If you choose life, you can present life to every child 
that's under your care. Amen. And that you may love the Lord your God and listen to his voice and hold fast to him. Stout-hearted men. I'm kind of in a race with time because I want to deliver this in its entirety. But there may be someone here that is like others I've known through the years that somehow in their mind, they decided that being a Christian was a wimpy. That meant you couldn't do the things of the world. And if you didn't do those things, you were a wimp. But if you're going to serve God and honor God, you're going to have to be stout-hearted. One of the key elements that Jesus presented to us is that he never sought to please men, only God. That takes a stout-hearted man. But too many times people cave and, and they surrender when they're in a group because others are doing the things they should not be doing and they keep persuading if you're in that group for you to do it. Let me tell you, I, I learned it working in the oil field. I learned it or I experienced it in construction for many years. I experienced it with friends at baseball games and such. And this is what I learned. You don't have to yield and to submit to that which does not please God. Amen. Amen. God expects a lifetime of devotion and God expects men to lead. It's all through the scripture. Men, God expects you to lead. Don't wimp out. Act like men. Reading this again, 1 Corinthians 16, 13 through 14. Be on your guard. Be watchful. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be men of courage. Takes courage. Be strong. And then do everything in love. How about that? Not out of anger, not out of spite. In the English Standard Version, the same scripture says, be watchful, stand firm in the faith. And it says, act like men. I love this translation. Act like men, be strong. What is he saying? Basically, he's saying, grow up. Don't act like a boy. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, he said, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Your children don't think like you, and they don't reason like you. That's why it's hard to win an argument with your children. <laughs> but he said, when I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. And when you become men and women... Quit trying to be your child's best friend and just be their parent. Amen. And be their parent. Can you imagine God trying to be our friend and God says be holy and say, oh, but I love wickedness so much. And he pats us on the top of the head and, and gives us a scoot with a pat on our, you know where, and, and sends us down and says, okay, just go do anything you want. I still love you. I still, I'll always be there for you. I'll always support you. No matter how drunk you get, no matter how spaced out you get, no matter how... Do you hear what I'm saying? I wish I had done everything perfect as a parent, as a man raising my children. I look at my own children, and they do so much better than I did. I'm proud of the way my children raise their children. I love it. I'm thankful for it. I just... I just... If I could go back and do anything over and do it better, I'd go back and, and focus more on speaking into the hearts of my children and be more like my children are to their children. But I'm proud of my children and I'm thankful for them. Act like men. Don't act like a boy anymore. Stop it. Quit. Start acting like men is what he's saying. And then act like men. Don't act like a beast. Always seeking your own will and your own passion. Romans 1 and 25 said, They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the creator. You could say it this way. They sought the immor 
immoral animal appetites rather than the glory of God. Does this make any sense? Amen. Act like men, not like a boy, not like an animal. Act like men. Point number two, we must save the children. The modern day American church is culturing its children to seek the temporal rather than the eternal. It's been going on for decades. Enthralled with sports, mesmerized with self-gratification, absorbed with pleasure, men fail to seek after the Spirit of God, believing the trophies of the earth are of greater value than the treasures of heaven. Did that make sense? Eighty-five statistics tell us 85% of those who are saved committed their lives to Christ before the age of of 18. Let's save the children. Lead your family when they are young. If you fail, you may not get the chance when they are old. And I will elaborate on all of this a little more later on. We have literally relinquished our authority to the state. Take a look at the abortion issue of today. They tell me that in 1973, or was it 72 when they made the ruling? But in, in 73 when it became law that you could murder your unborn babies, that there were literally pastors that said, Oh, good, now we don't have to be embarrassed when our little teenage girls get pregnant. Isn't that sick? Amen. The immorality of our nation did not begin recently. It's always been a battle it's just that there's been times there's been decades when men fought harder than in other decades it's time to stand and fight if you're not in a battle find a cause and let's fight take a look at big ed big education big pharma big government issues of today i consistently hear things from our local arena and they say it won't happen here it won't happen on my watch and they don't even know what to watch for and I'll talk about this a little later I don't want to take time and explain it right now because I want to I have a little more I want to get to but what about brain pop some of our teachers are familiar with the phrase brain pop because it is a teaching that's brought in not through curriculum. You'd be surprised what comes into your school that's not through the curriculum of the school and it's bringing in the, the wrong values and the wrong ideas, the wrong concepts. And brain pop is one that brings in critical race theory into your school. But it sounds so good. All right, pop in our brain. We're really getting after it. I'm sure it has a lot of good stuff. But it's in our schools in this county. Amen. And I will be making more of an issue of this with our school board and our pastors. What a, amen. What about furries? The children, there's not that many in our county, but they're here. The furries, the children that act like little animals and cute, and it looks cute, and, and they like to portray little puppies and little kittens. And it looks cute, but it goes bizarre because they get to portray this throughout the day and other kids are trying to figure out what's wrong with these kids, but they can say nothing. Did you know it is in our school handbook that if a boy says he's a girl and another boy says, no, you're a boy, that boy can get in trouble. It's in our handbook. The school says and I talked to them in the superintendent's office. They said, we're afraid we'll get sued. But you're going to leave the young boy that has his head on straight? Leave him out to dry, you know, hang and dry out? Just leave him out there? Guys, it's time to wake up and save the children. It's time that men be men and stand up to the school board, stand up to the county, stand up to the city, and let's get done what is done, what needs to be done. Do what is right. 
Many men are not cowards, but they're too busy trying to satisfy their own ego. They forfeit the children. My question is, start planning now if you think you can explain this to God. You better start planning now how to explain it to God because it will never be a good enough explanation. You're trying to fight your own way and make your, bring your own wealth in instead of trusting God and, and you're leaving the world out to dry. The Bible said we must seek first God's righteousness and then all these things will follow. And I affirm to you God's word is true. Amen. Is this, am I, am I saying anything wrong? Is this, is this too hard? Will every wimp in the house that thinks this is too hard, please stand and raise your hand. <laughs> the little furries, and, and let me, I'm, I'll talk about this more later. These furries, what is behind it, some of you remember the movie called, decades ago called Cats. What is behind it is, is a nurturing, a culturing these kids because grown adults do these things like animals and they call it cuddling and all it turns out to be is giant orgies if you know what that is drag queens in public schools but thank god we have states fighting back did you know we have politicians across america that are standing stronger than many of the pastors in our nation Many of the pastors in our nation are saying nothing and doing nothing. Thank God for Christian men who are standing up in the political realm. Okay, I've got to get to this point and move on. I'm behind. We are, rever we are in the process of reversing Roe versus Wade, which hopefully will come out tomorrow. But we're still allowing the state to abort our children before they're born again. They are capturing their minds. They are destroying their minds. They are destroying their hearts. They are pillaging their spirits. And we are allowing them to abort our children, to destroy our children before they're born again. Church, let's save the children. Amen. 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 Y'all can, yes, thank you. Now, point number three. God wants you, to, here's the point. God wants you to be amazed at what he will do. Amen. God wants you to be amazed at what he will do. Habakkuk 1 and 5, look at the nations and watch. Now, we hear all the negative and all the bad stuff, and it makes some people tired of, of fighting the battle and feel like giving up. It makes some people frustrated. But when you're engaged in the battle, you see that God is doing something. And here he said, look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed, for I'm going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. And God's doing it in our day. Church, it's not too late. God is still on the throne. The Spirit still dwells within us, and we are preaching the truth. It's not too late. Watch and see what God is going to do. Thank you, Jesus. As Blake preached two weeks ago, we will not do this without the Spirit of God. You won't do this without the Spirit of God. We must have the Spirit of God. The Spirit of fire, the Bible says. Amen. The Spirit of wisdom. Amen. The Spirit of God that brings a fire and power into our hearts and into our own spirits that compels us and causes us to stand and not draw back. If we don't do it today, when will we do it? But we will do it now. If we won't, who will? But we will. Are you with me on this church? Are you with me on this church? 
We're planning and strategizing and developing the mission to reach the children in this county, and you're included in this mission. Offer your thoughts, your time, and your life, but commit yourself to saving the children. Pictures of seeing children murdered at school rip our hearts and make us weep, but we fail to shed tears and we fail to get involved even if we picture them going to hell. Unless we save the children, they're going to hell. Let's save the children. Amen. Amen. We're reversing Roe versus Wade. We're reversing Roe versus Wade, but we're allowing the state to abort our children before they're born again. This can't be done. We can't be tolerated. We must save the children. Would you worship as, as the team sings worship with them? Let's let the Spirit minister to our hearts. anything that has gone into the depth of your spirit please receive that because you're going to need that in the coming days I'm asking this house this congregation to join with me and do everything we can to reach the children and save the children in our county and we're strategizing bus routes we're strategizing how to uh, pre-service on Wednesday nights and service on Wednesday nights and we need pre-service help, help during the service, ministry time, people cooking food to feed the children when they come on Wednesdays, and then running our bus on Sundays, and, and reaching the children and adults also. And I'm asking you, both men and women, I'll say it this way. You see, there's time, men, we need to be soft. We need to be loving, and we need to be kind. But there's time that men and women both need to engage in the by the power of God and in the Spirit of God and through the grace of God 
and engage in this battle and save our children. Husbands, challenge your wives. Wives, challenge your husbands and speak to your children and to your grandchildren. And it may not be that many years till I have my own great-grandchildren. If you don't help us reach the children, if we don't reach the children, if we can't save the children, the day will come that our children will live in a very strange and wicked world. Amen. 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 Praise God. In a moment, E.T. will begin to dismiss and he'll call the prayer line up here. And those who are on the prayer line today, step forward and be prepared to pray a prayer of faith. And you'll be welcome to come forward and receive prayer for any reason, any cause. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our savior. Jesus is our deliverer. And they will pray the prayer of faith with you. God will hear and God will answer your prayer. But maybe you'll want to step forward and say, I just want to join in prayer and surrender for the cause of our children. And I want prayer for anointing. And I want prayer and I want to surrender up front. If you have that desire, I want you to come forward at that time. And they'll continue. You can, you can be dismissed if you want. And, and you can come forward if you want. But under every circumstance, do not leave this house without offering a commitment to God and saying, God, I surrender, I commit. It will take your time, it will take your energy, it will demand your resources, but we'll say, God, I surrender. Let me help me, let me help save the children. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. Pray a prayer of commitment with me to the Lord. And if you're not saved, you can be saved right here, right now. All you have to do is ask Jesus to be your Savior. And you surrender to Him. You repent and stop going the direction you're going. And you turn and follow Him. 